Hello. Uh, a little bit of a repair job today. This I picked up this morning from another car boot sale. Yes, love them. Now, this is the Korg Delta. It was made about 1979 to 1984. And it's a string machine and a synthesizer. Basic synthesizer, but still all the same. It's very nice. It's a cut down version of the Korg Trident. Now, the problem that I found is there's no synthesizer. Just a few little pops and cracks occasionally. Ugh. But if I bring up the strings, it's... Oh, it sounds beautiful. Uh, but no synthesizer section. You should be able to mix the synth and the strings together to create some really, really nice sounds. Uh, and no, nothing happening, no synth. So I'm gonna open it up, we'll have a look inside there and you know, fingers crossed, see what the problem is because it's just the occasional pop, that's all. Right, I can't find it, but normally this is where I say screwdriver time. Ah! <laughs> screwdriver time, sorry, I found it now. Right, let's get in this thing and have a look. After a bit of pratting about, there's so many screws in this thing, along the bottom, down the sides. You know, I took some out and realised that you don't have to. There's just four screws here, four screws there, and then three along the bottom, and that is all you need to open it up. Now, the problem in here is the string section works. The synthesizer doesn't. It just gives the occasional pop and crackle now and again. Uh, they're very nicely marked. Strings mix, synth block, noise, noise and block. Uh, well, which is obvious really because that's what's on the other side. But anyway, let's get a close look in here. Uh, the condition looks okay. It doesn't look like there's any beer or or cigarette ash or nasties stuck in there. I'm going to power it back up actually and see if I get any voltages from the synth section up there. Just to eradicate whether it's a power supply problem to the synth. Right. Am I on? Oh, now then, sometimes we have to <laughs> we have to plug one of these in. Uh. Oh. Let's try again. Right. Okay. No. No sin. Oh. Oh well. Never mind. Leave that plugged in. And try and figure out what the hell's going on in here. Inside the synth block, I've kind of. Here we go. Uh, what's going off there? I don't like the sound of that. Come on. Right. No, we have to go deeper down the rabbit hole. Now, when I take all the buttons off, something like this, I do it in a, in a kind of an order, like so. So it's sort of a map of where all the buttons belong. I mean, I know obviously they go on the sliders and they go on the pots, but sometimes you have different size buttons, etc, etc. Luckily, they're just the same. It's just uh, two variations. But then... Got this horrible job of having to undo all these. Still, it's got to be done. Right, I've taken out all the yeah, the screws and everything. There you go. <laughs> Sorted. Right. Ooh, 
bit of uh, crap and contamination has gotten inside here between the sliders and everything so I think while we're at it we'll take off all these covers and give all that lot of clean up as well. Those little trimmer pots here there's in in the actual lid there's little plastic pull outs that you can little stoppers that you can pull out of the panel at the top and put a screwdriver down to do a little bit of trimming. Oh that's good to know. I wouldn't have known that without seeing those inside there. Right, put a layer of sponge underneath the circuit boards and you're going to eliminate the possibility of short circuiting anything, hopefully. Right, switch back on again. That's the strings, not the synth. Okay, so the synth section has died. Why? Come on. By the way, as we're looking in here, just looking on the chips here, 1981. So the vintage of this, the oldest, well, the youngest chip rather, that I can find, is 1981. Week 20. So there you go, we've got a clue as to when this thing was actually constructed. But I know they were made between 1979 and 1985 at a push, something like that. Right, just checking around at the temperature of some of these uh, microchips and bits and pieces on board. There's nothing that looks too sort of, you know, over the top. These uh, variable resistors, yeah, they're quite warm. And what I've done is I've held the key down with a little idea there and we're just going to go around some of the chips with this super free set. It doesn't always work, it sometimes works. If, if you cool the component down it starts to work again. See the black spots on the screen is the temperature. On the synth section board you've got the resonance, the envelope generator depth and then this is the bandpass and low pass and I have sort of noticed flicking this up and down it sort of works a little bit and then stops, that's the end of it. Now these two chips here, the LM13600, they're dual operational transconductant amplifiers and they're used for a lot of things. They're bandpass filters, they're current controlled amplifiers, they're current controlled filters, oscillators, timers, they're used for all sorts of things. These are actually the chips that are inside the MS20. Now. I'm going to change the capacitors that are going to this chip. Just, uh, I don't know, I, I just get a feeling that I, I should change them anyway. Because when capacitors get old, uh, or if they heat up and cool down a lot, they, you know, they tend to go, especially in old equipment like this. So I'm going to change those. Now I've got an ESR meter, but these are a little bit low for the ESR meter to actually read them properly. So I'll get the soldering iron out and we'll remove these four capacitors and put four new ones in and see what the next step is. Right, unfortunately I didn't have exactly the same capacitor. The same value, 0 0.001 microfarads and it's these that I've taken out and these that I've put in. A little bit different, one's green, one's orange. Anyway, so I've changed those four and uh, we'll see how far we are now. <laughs> that 
That sounds good to me. That's, uh, I think that's probably done it. Uh, let me just check that it's not actually any strings interfering with anything here. No, the strings is down and the synth is up, so it's just the synth side that's running. <laughs> go capacitors capacitors are your enemy especially when they're 30 years old always change capacitors uh, well that seems to work now so I'm gonna put it all together and have another play around but I'm still getting those little pops I don't like that I've changed another capacitor here on one of the output chips and it's another 0 0.001 microfarad and I'm going to switch on now and see yeah okay that sounds okay But, when I changed these caps, we waited a, a couple of minutes and it started to make the crackling sounds. So I'm just going to leave it on for a moment and see if the crackling sounds come through again. It might be a component that's heating up somewhere. One problem with capacitors is they could get damaged if they're next to another component that is heating up and cooling down, getting very hot, and it tends to dry up the capacitor. I'm just checking now with this camera to see where any hot spots are. And of course all the chips are heating up as they would do, as you would expect. But uh, it doesn't look like anything else on the board is getting warm. I can't even find any hot resistors. So one of the recurring problems that happens with old synthesizers like this is the capacitors. The capacitors start to break down because they're on, off, they warm up, cool down, and uh, eventually they start to break down and they suffer from ESR, equivalent series resistance. And uh, actually, don't go away. Equivalent series resistance, very simple. ESR. So you have a capacitor. And ESR really is the resistance that is in series with the capacitor. So you've got your capacitor and you've got a tiny bit of resistance. All capacitors do. Now what can happen over time is due to cycling of heat, hot and cold, hot and cold, uh, or other damage or even the electrolyte drying out this can change the resistance and this can affect other parts of your circuit and destroy it so that's ESR you can have you buy one of these little things this is an ESR meter and this reads the ESR across a capacitor these are quite good because they'll actually read a capacitor that's in circuit well to a degree anyway and that'll tell you how many ohms is across that capacitor. Anyway, blah, 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 going on and on and on. Back to the keyboard. So yes, so the keyboard's 
a few years old and you know it needs that little bit of tender loving care to keep it going and hopefully what I've just done there by changing those few capacitors is you know I'll keep it going for a little bit longer ideally you could change them all but you would be there all day there's there's hundreds of capacitors in there and I was finding it difficult to find the right ones hanging around in my uh, workroom and I certainly didn't want to go down to Maplin's with a great big order of thousands of capacitors but anyway the keyboard's working again and it wasn't the chip I thought it was going to be one of the chips that does the low pass and band pass filters the 13600 chips they're getting quite hard to get hold of now so that chip's also used in the MS20 I think I already mentioned that but anyway anyway we're nearly there it's all, I'm going to put it all back together and polish it up, make it look nice and pretty and stick it on the shelf or stick it on eBay or... But I hope you found that interesting. It was, it was a nice little challenge and it's definitely worth doing for a good old Korg Delta. So thanks for watching again and any questions just leave them in those comments down below or any corrections I'm always open to education let me know all the best thanks again <laughs>